Hi, it's Kirby Summers, and I want to welcome you to the Epstein Project podcast. Today, I want to catch up on two things. The latest with Prince Andrew and the ridiculousness that um, we have seen him engage in. And also, I want to tell you about the publishing contract that I was excited about that I basically was like, yeah, no, you know what? This is just, this is not right. I, I read the fine print and I'm going to just kind of give you a run rundown on what happened there. So first, please click on like the video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Thank you for everything. By the way, um, you know, the, the two books I have, well, I have three on Amazon, but the two that are doing incredibly well are obviously Galen Maxwell, An Unauthorized Biography. And for those of you who, there have been a couple of people who have, you know, sent me back the word unauthorized with a question. So just an FYI, um, authorized biographies are literally just autobiography kind of books. They're either commissioned by the author or, you know, there's some kind of arrangement and it's done really with the person looking over your shoulder. But a biography that stands alone, uh, that you're not doing it for pay, like Glenn Maxwell did not pay me to write a flattering book about her. Um, all of those are unauthorized. I just liked the word unauthorized. And in fact, I was just going to call it unauthorized, but I needed people to know what it was about. And so I called it Galen Maxwell, an unauthorized biography, um, which her sister purchased, by the way. She was one of the first people, Isabel Maxwell, to order it from my website uh, as a pre-order and which Glenn Maxwell has in fact read. But that book is doing phenomenally well, as is the third edition of Jeffrey Epstein, Predator Spy. So let me just get to Prince Andrew. Prince Andrew, as you know, has it, it, you know hung out with Jeffrey Epstein and Glenn Maxwell for a very long time. On the record, it, it, he has admitted to hanging out with him commencing in 1999. And here we are, it's 2021. Epstein has been dead for a good two years. And Prince Andrew is reaching into his grave, trying to use a, a settlement that Jeffrey Epstein reached in 2009 with Virginia Giuffray. Now, mind you, that's 2009, one year before we have this photograph of Epstein and Andrew in the park. 2009, when Jeffrey Epstein was still in jail because he did not get out until 2010, okay? Um, so while he is still in jail, he settles with a lot of the... Um, the girls who then later, obviously, at, by the time uh, 2009 came around, they were women. And one of these was Virginia Giuffray. In the document, he had a clause. And basically, that clause said that by accepting the settlement amount, and it's undisclosed, you are agreeing to hold me harmless and hold harmless my friends, my, I think it was, I forget the exact word. I don't have my notes in front of me, but basically his business associates and his um, employees. So she signed that and you know, she, she continued on with the battle to bring other uh, people to, um, to account. We know that um, what happened recently was that Alan Dershowitz and Prince Andrew have been communicating about the lawsuit. And Dershowitz, because he is an attorney and he knows how to twist words, and frankly, the law is 
literally as good as the judge that's sitting there listening and as good as the, the attorney on the other side is willing to sort of fight with the other party. And that, and, and because it's just really subject to interpretation. So Virginia sued uh, Dershowitz um, because he dared her to. And so she's like, sure, do you want me to sue you? I'm going to sue you. Well, Dershowitz used that agreement from 2009 to get Virginia's attorneys. And I believe in this case, it was David uh, Boys. And I know there's a lot of controversy about him, and I'm not going to go into that in this podcast, um, to um, get Virginia to drop the lawsuit. So that is the advice that Alan Dershowitz has given Prince Andrew. He's basically said, it's worked for me. It'll work for you. So as you know, the court date, the first court date was uh, this past Monday on September the 13th. And at the very last minute, an attorney shows up on behalf of Prince Andrew. He alerts the court. And in this case, it was Judge Preska. Isn't that name familiar? Alerts the court that, oh, yeah, I'm here. I'm going to be uh, appearing uh, by phone because it was sort of like everybody called in on behalf of Prince Andrew. But wait, I have two things to tell you. One is that we haven't been properly served. Yeah, no, he was, you know, he was served electronically, um, not just a couple of his attorneys. In fact, even this attorney was contacted and served um, that appeared and said, we haven't been served properly, but there was physical service that was sent to the same address, by the way, that I used to send Prince Andrew, a copy of Glenn Maxwell, an unauthorized biography, which has a lot of little snippets about Prince Andrew along the way. Okay, so um, he tells the judge, hey, we have been served. And when that happens, it's a delay tactic, right? Because they want to just delay, delay and deny. But he also said, in addition to, hey, we haven't been served, he said, but we're not going to need a lawsuit. We just want to squash the lawsuit because of the agreement that Virginia signed in 2009 with Jeffrey Epstein. Okay, so where does that leave Prince Andrew? Prince Andrew, essentially, I mean, he's basically said, I don't know who she is. I have never seen her. But now he wants to use the same agreement that Jeffrey Epstein had Virginia sign so she could just, you know, sort of like leave him alone and stop outing him to get out of this lawsuit. To me, that tells me, you know what? I always believed Virginia, but it just makes it even that much more, um, uh, just it underscores the fact that you know what? He lied to us about the fact that he couldn't sweat the minute he said that on the BBC, if you remember. Everybody pulled up. You all pulled up um, great pictures of him sweating and running. And there were his armpits were like, like just disgustingly wet. His face, you know, was exactly like Virginia had described. She said, he, you know, she was dancing with him at the Tramp um, nightclub, and he was, sweat was pouring all over him, blah, blah. Well, you know what? He lied about the sweating part, and he's lied about the fact that he doesn't know who she is. You know what? He, maybe he doesn't remember her face. Maybe he doesn't remember her specifically. And, and if he doesn't, it's because I am sure, without a shadow of a doubt, that this, aside from the three times that Virginia was given to him as a gift, as if she were a piece of candy or a cup of tea by Jeffrey Epstein and Glenn Maxwell to Prince Andrew to consume in a sexual way. And by the way, that is called rape because when you are trafficked, no matter what your age, you are being 
great, okay? So he goes ahead and he partakes of Virginia Dufre um, three times, but that's not the only girl, and I'm going to use the word girl because yeah, at the time, Jeffrey Epstein and Glenn Maxwell were offering up minors. That's not the only girl uh, that he had access to. He had access to minor girls, and he had access to girls who were of age, but it doesn't, again, they were trafficked, okay? So they were trafficked. He had access to them sexually via Jeffrey Epstein and his good friend from childhood, because they know each other for a very long time. If you read Glenn Maxwell, an unauthorized biography, you will see they know each other for a very, very long time. Um, he had access uh, to an endless stream of women via his friends, Jeffrey and Glenn, okay? So maybe he doesn't remember Virginia, but you know what? At, at this point, he will never forget her. We will never let him forget her. Um, okay, so that's what's happening, and, uh, the judge has basically said, um, that they're going to try to unseal the 2009 agreement, which was sealed by the court, so that's interesting, they're going to unseal it, um, this time, obviously, the, the court has been put on notice, so there's going to be new um, service of the documents, and because this attorney made himself known, all they really have to do uh, on Virginia's side is serve the attorney that represents him, and that constitutes service, and so it begins the clock all over again for Andrew to have, quote, the 21 days to respond, so there will be another hearing, um, that will be considered the first hearing uh, because this one in a way is null and void based on the fact that he claims he just never he was never served you know prince andrew never served um okay so anyway i think i told you all that i was really excited i got a book deal and i you know i was very very excited over it um Initially, I told him what I wanted from this book deal, which was different from a book deal that maybe he would give somebody else. And he was like, yes. And it, it you know, and he flattered me. He kind of, you know, by the time the whole, by the time I got my hands on a contract, and I told this to one of my, well, two of my friends, because I'm so angry. It felt just like um, I was being, oh, I have to catch my breath here because I'm so angry. Like I was being groomed by a sexual predator. But in this case, I was being groomed by a publishing predator. So go figure, you know, there are people who, who basically will, even me at this point in my life, you know, I took his word. I was like, okay, well, you're going to do this. I'm going to do this. And he was like, yeah. And then suddenly when I got the contract, which is ridiculous, I'm going to see if I can pull up this contract and, and maybe find a couple of the points that I found the most egregious and read this to you. Let's see. Um, so anyway, um, what he wants, and initially he had agreed to forego, I already sell a Jeffrey Epstein Predator Spy and Glenn Maxwell an unauthorized biography through my website, and I have for a very long time. Um, and I have had it on Amazon. It's already, both of them reached the number one bestseller for new releases over the summer. And... Uh, I thought he understood because I make myself very clear. It is nobody has ever said that I don't make myself clear. If I don't like something, I will tell you I don't like it. I'm very straightforward. So I told him at some point, and I think I told him again and then again, that, yeah, what I have in place, because I have it in place, 
I have my books on my website. I have my books on Amazon. You don't touch that. If you can bring me what he said was, quote, 50% of the rest of the market, okay, fine, we have a deal. But no, the contract I have basically says that I give him that me, on behalf of my heirs, my executors, the administrators, the successors, and the assignees, I grant him exclusive worldwide rights, including foreign sub-licensing for a period of three years. I told this man, I'm going to work with you on a very limited basis. I want to be able to give you 30-day notice that I don't like you and I'm giving you the right to tell me you don't like working with me and we're going to dissolve this relationship. Well, no, this one says that I'm giving him exclusive worldwide, world. I'm so angry, worldwide rights to my work for a period of three years. And it means everything. I'm not allowed to sell my work, according to him, on my website. I'm not allowed to sell my work on Amazon. Um, I, let's see, what else? Uh, <laughs> I, I am trying to read to see what, what else. Oh, and then it was something almost like, um, that if I have to, uh, do some kind of advertising for the publisher, him, that at my own expense, I have to go anywhere in the world, pay for it out of pocket. Basically, he's offering to pay me $2 or something like that per book. And he's going to pay it over the course of like, you know, maybe three times a year or something that's ridiculous. And out of that measly tiny little bit of money for each one of my books. Then he's going to retain a certain percentage just in the event somebody returns a book. But that, you know, basically, you know, like I'm going to have to be available to go anywhere to do any kind of um, advertising and pay for it out of pocket. Just make myself available to this to this person 24-7, 365 days out of the year. And um, guess what? It, he controls my books, my work, my life. Um, sorry, that's just not acceptable. Um, he also offered me, initially I said to him, look, I'm offering you this deal. Therefore, I'm not looking for an advance. But he actually offered me an advance. It was laughable. It was laughable. It's like... Seriously, I make more than that in one day, but you're going to offer me this paltry amount of money, which was very insulting. Again, I can make this in one day. Um, so I sent him a notice and I basically said, hey, you know, I'm willing to uphold the offer that I made you, but none of the stuff that I have is up for grabs. And, you know, that, that upfront advance, you know, I've been offered just shy of $10 million, which I have refused. And I said, that offer for someone like me? Yeah, no, I'm not interested in that offer. And I said, unless you can uh, keep your word and basically give me the deal that I initially believe that we have, you know, just, I'm just really not interested. Um, so. I walked away from this. Um, it is, you know, I have been publishing my own books now since what, 2000, um, because I started to write real estate related books. I started to sell them on my website. I had something called Landlord Links Guides. So they were like guides for the public to find a landlord and bypass the broker fee because I've always been an advocate for the underdog. And so I had these guides and I would publish them every year, update them, and I would sell them through my website. Now, obviously, I've been writing since I was a kid. I was published when I was 
17, I had a front uh, page, um, like a front cover story for two months. And my, my memoir, Billionaire's Woman, I wrote that, I think, 20 years ago. You know, I kind of like added some things and kind of put it on my website two years ago. And now I'm working on filling it in you know there are a bunch of years that are sort of missing from my memoir that I'm filling in because I'm doing basically the um Cinderella doesn't live here anymore the sequel what happens after I leave because there was still a lot of interference in my life and this connects to the Epstein case and it connects to Mossad and it connects to the CIA and I really wanted to be able to show you guys how those worlds connect and what happens behind closed doors in those worlds and I can only tell you that through the billionaire's woman because there's only so much I can tell you via the Epstein Maxwell stories in any event um I've done it on my own I was selling my books through my website only and as a pdf file um, which was perfect for me, was perfect for me. Many people wanted a paperback version and someone at some point said, you know, it would be nice for you to do this on Kindle. So despite the fact that I did not really want to put my stuff on Amazon, I did it because many of my followers were like, you know, it would it would be very helpful to me. So that reduced my income significantly per book, right? Because on my website, I'm I'm charging twenty five dollars. I'm giving I think anywhere from a dollar thirty to a dollar seventy to my merchant for the credit card fee. And on Amazon, I have to give a lot more to Amazon. Okay. I figured, let me try it because it does have a broader audience. So in a way, I do make up in numbers what I lose by selling the books individually at full price. However, going with this publisher, and perhaps it's the, the same way with all the other publishers, unless they want to give me a seven-figure advance, and quite honestly, having experienced this and read the contract, I'm not even sure that a seven-figure advance, because Julie Brown got a million dollars, I believe. She got a million dollars for her book, which is connected to the stories that she wrote for the newspaper, the Miami Herald. And it's connected to, um, I think it's an HBO special or it's a special that is based on her book. I, I don't know that I would accept a million dollars for my work um, because that's like when you write, those of you who are artists and who write or you're in music, you're a musician or you do something because it's your passion and you love it and you sacrifice your life because I do this every day. I write every day. You guys know I have a newsletter. I write my books. I'm always writing. So I, I don't know that I'm willing to sell my soul to a publisher uh, who will have control of my name, my likeness, my time. Um, I, I, you know, like I didn't uh, bear my soul and tell the whole world that I'm a, a trafficked victim slash survivor and that I was a sex slave to a billionaire to make money. Because if that had been my goal, I would have taken the $10 million that I was offered 20 years ago and you would not never have heard of me, right? I would have had to sign a non-disclosure. You would have never heard of me. So I'm not doing this for the money. I'm doing this because I wanted to get my story out. I had no idea that it was going to resonate with so many other people who had been sexually abused as children, boys and girls, women and men, that it was going to help me amplify the voice of the Epstein survivors and the Glenn Maxwell survivors. 
I didn't know where this was going to take me. I just thought when I began uh, this road, this journey, that I was going to find the missing pieces of my own puzzle. And yeah, I, I'll, I'll add the pieces that I already had to the Epstein case. I just did not know that I was going to have um, the kind of impact I have had. Um, however, if you guys want to write your own books, and I suggest, and many of you do, I suggest you start a website, you start tweeting, you start blogging, you start writing about your stuff, and you, you, you get a following, um, people who are interested in what you have to say, and then you know, write your book, put it up for sale on your website. If you want to go the Amazon Amazon route, it's not that difficult to figure out. You create a cover, you create the content, you upload it, they approve it, and it's on sale. And then you just tell the followers that you have created um, where your information is and the people who are interested in knowing more about your life and what you're writing about will find you. I mean, you know, I'm always talking about my books, so you do have to be part writer, part marketer, but you know, it's something that you have to do in any business, right? Even if you're looking for a job, you have to sell yourself to the person who's going to hire you. What are your traits? What are you going to do for me? You still have to do that. Um, so you know, just the idea of this thing that happened. I'm just really happy that I'm very careful in life, but it really felt like I was being groomed. And then finally, boom, he sent me this contract. And, oh, so you didn't really mean everything you said. So in life, there's more than one way of somebody taking advantage of you, obviously. It's not just sexual. As I have just discovered, there are publishing predators. So let's be let's be careful in life. Let's join together. You know, this is the only way that we can um, help each other. You know, just we share our experiences. We're on this journey together. So anyway, I'm going to thank you for listening. Again, like the video, like the video, and subscribe. All right, it's Curvy Summers for the Epstein Project Podcast. Have a good day. Bye.